So for this assignment, which we sat last uh, Thursday, there were two previous exam questions, um, just to give you a bit of opportunity to try and revise some topics that are not related to the, the wave function that we've been doing a lot of recently. So this um, first question was differentiation, so given this function here, and then you're evaluating f dash and they're giving you a particular uh, value to work out the f dash value at. The starting point for this should be that you should recognise that an expression like this, to differentiate it, you need to use the, the chain rule. And the chain rule for differentiation acknowledges the fact that you've got a complex function going on here, so you've got a power function that needs to be differentiated, but then you've also got this um, other function within the bracket that also needs to be differentiated. So in the first instance, let's differentiate the power term and the rule for differentiation is bring down the power to the front and then reduce the power on your term by one. So that would mean that you'd end up with negative a half there. So that's the first bit of the chain rule, but now we also need to multiply by the derivative of the term inside the bracket, which in this case is 5x minus 4, and the derivative of that is just 5. So if we put the 5 times the half together, and we write that at the front, so we would have 5 halves, and we leave it like that. You don't write it as 2.5, you leave it as 5 over 2. And you've of course got this 5x minus 4, to the power minus a half. If the question was just differentiate, then you could leave your answer at that point. However, because we're actually going to have to evaluate, then we need to really interpret what this power of negative a half means. So in the first instance, you deal with the fact you've got a negative power there, and negative powers can be made positive by taking that term back down to the bottom line, and that would give you the power of positive a half. However, that's still a complicated thing to work out. So the expectation would be that you then know to interpret the power of a half as being the square root of 5x minus 4. And once you've reached that point, you're then able to substitute. So that's this key point here at the side. So we use the chain rule. And remember, you interpret negative powers and fractional powers before we've substituted the, the value. And what I mean by interpret is I mean change into positive powers and interpret any roots that you've got there. So now it's going on to work out f dashed of 4. So we should just be straightforward doing 5 times a 5 over 2 times the square root of 5 times 4 minus 4. And that's going to give us, on the bottom there, your square root. You've got 2 times the square root of 5 times 4 is 20 minus 4 is the square root of 16, which of course is 4. And we end up with a value of f dashed 4 as 5 over 2 times 4, which is 5 eighths. And you don't get into complications of trying to write things or work out 16 to the power of negative a half or anything at that point, you should have done this process here about interpreting. Um, in terms of how you get your marks here, really looking for you to have done this point here, uh, where you just use the chain rule and then tidied all that um, up really. So we'd really be looking for the working of this sort of nature to earn the second uh, mark and also interpreting the, the square root and then the value to get you your, your 5 eighths at the bottom, getting you your third mark. Second question then, not related to that at all, you're given a function and you're asked to factorise fully. So this comes from your work on polynomials and at National 5 level, you know how to factorise a quadratic. At higher, you're introduced to how we can factorise um, cubic expressions or even quartic expressions. And the starting point is always looking at this last number here. 
If they don't give you any roots or any factors, you have to try and work your way and find one of them. And you do that by first of all considering what are all the possible factors of positive 9. And you're just going to basically try them out. And you can put them in a little list. Plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 9. So you've got six possible uh, factors there. And you're basically trying to work out if I substitute into this expression with each of these in turn. So if you try f of 1, do you get 0? Because that would imply it was a root. And in fact, f of 1 is not equal to 0, so it's not a root. But when you try f of negative 1, you can try um, just by subbing in here. Obviously, we aren't allowed to use a calculator, but you can try and see that actually that does give you 0 when you sub that in. And because that 0, that would tell us that x plus 1 is in fact a factor. And that helps us get started because we can then do the nested calculation. And when you're doing your nested calculation, remember it would be minus 1 that you would be using. And you put your coefficients in from your expression. Now the key thing here is there's your x cubed term. Your x squared term is minus 7, but there's no x term. So because we put them in in descending powers, of x. If there are any missing terms, you need to put their coefficient in as 0 and not plus 9, which is the mistake quite a number of you made when you did this particular um, example. So first thing, always writing down the very first value, and then after that you are multiplying continually and adding. So 2 times negative 1 is going to give us negative 2. Then you're adding those, you get negative 9 times again. You're going to get positive 9, add together, and then you times again, you get negative 9, and that's how you get your 0 at the end, which is, of course is the value for f of negative 1. And as we've already said, that means x plus 1 is your factor. The other factor, remember, will now have appeared at this point here, which will be your quadratic. And that would become 2x squared minus 9x plus 9. <coughs> Excuse me. So if we put all that together with our original function, that would mean we would have x plus 1. You get 2x squared minus 9x plus 9. And then, of course, you need to factorise your 2x squared. And that... In itself, we'd go into 2x minus 3, and you can do that by your own method of trial and error till you find the combination um, that works. So what you get marks for here, and this would be a four mark um, question, and this we're looking for you to know the process that you go through. Um, so kind of this here would be the first mark, actually carrying out a nested calculation. Um, arriving at the, the first factor and then getting your quadratic factor. That's the third um, mark. And the fourth mark is for it fully factorised. I can't emphasise enough how you do not, there shouldn't be any equal zero here. We're not trying to write down the roots. If you go on and write down the roots, you're going to end up um, losing yourself mark four. Because the question just said factorise and you've got to know that that means you're just writing it out in terms of bracket times bracket times bracket.